You're going to be seriously interested in today's video. Let me clear up and we'll get into it. Today's item is a very special item and it was donated by Lorne Smith, longtime patron and good friend of the channel. I do suggest you say hi to him in Discord. Now, look at this, I'm opening up. It's got some sort of Asian writing on it. That could be a clue as to what's in it. And you'll probably have guessed from the video title, of course, because I will have done that. But there is indeed a super duper Super Famicom in here. Well, <laughs> Not a Super Famicom, rather, a regular Famicom. This is the original one. And Lorne has sent me a letter and he says, Hey Andrew, it's the Famicom I promised you an age ago. Sorry it took so long, better bait than never. Don't know if it's an actual functioning state. I don't have a PSU handy to test it. But hey, that's another video for you to make, Lorne. Thank you so much, Lorne. And indeed, that's what we're going to do because we're going to get this bad boy up and running. Oh, and I have to say, this is in superb condition compared to my one. So I'm going to show you guys what my ones look like. Look at that! <laughs> it's practically a totally different colour. So the, the units I've been using and working on have, have been this one and, oops, and this one here. <laughs> and I have a whole baggie of chips here to get them working and these are actually clone chips. So it doesn't work particularly well with Hydlide. <laughs> so I really uh, am looking forward to getting this working. But okay, let's uh, jump ahead, um, move this out of the way and see if we can get Lawn's bad boy up and running. So the first thing to do normally is to test them out. And what does that say? Oh, hang on. What am I seeing here? Is that, again, Japanese? Or am I just reading it wrong? No, that does look like, you know, it's got some original original stuff going on there. And the problem with these, you can see on the back, you've got these nubbins, and these are basically the modulation system. And there's two varieties. There is this one, which has several pins here in one corner, which is nice and simple. And then you have this one, which actually has the metal can soldered to the main board. That main board, of course, I showed you earlier like that. So that's that one or that one. And the problem with these, of course, they're RF and your Famicom really doesn't like to work with modern tellies anymore. And the other second problem with that, they actually contain the power supply for the Famicom, which, of course, these will be starting to fail now. There's caps and all sorts of stuff going wrong on them. There's actually a third as well. The polarity is center negative. So... By now you've probably tried it and decided your Famicom doesn't work because you're not getting any picture out just purely because your power supply is wrong. So Lorn said he hasn't tried it out. I'm not going to go and try it out as in right now because frankly, I don't like the power supply. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of my boards here. You can go on backofficeshow.com and get one. These are called the Power Vamp and they actually replace this totally. So you can bin that, yunk it out of the way and use this instead. And it gives you a nice clean composite signal that will work on any telly. Well, any telly with composite, which is pretty much most of them, especially in Europe. If you're in Europe, you definitely have a telly that will run that. So I'm gonna unscrew this and we're gonna have a look inside. I think we're pretty much there. So there's only six screws to think about. And if you're smart, you don't even have to take the screws out. You can leave them in that shell. So I'm just gonna gently prise it off. And it's gonna be a bit of a surprise to us what we find underneath, because we don't know which of these two kinds of modulator could be in it. So we're gonna pop the lid. Ta -da! Oh, brilliant. This is the best kind, because it's just so easy. So you <laughs> So you can see here, you've got the little ribbon cable right in there, and that's connecting to this board. So our board is replacing that, and it's lined up with the holes, everything, you don't have to worry. So let's just jump straight in. This is gonna be a quick, quick fix, I should hope. So all you've got to do is unscrew those four screws, and it's four screws on the um, other kind too. But the other kind, the, the say, the tricky bit is getting the heat sink off the main board. So you're going to have to pump in a lot of heat. So just bear that in mind when you're doing that. And while we have this open, I'll just show you the other one side by side. You see it there? It's a slightly longer board, you see. So these are the tabs for that heat shield, heat sink. You know, you're going to, again, work with it. 
I called it a heat shield there, and I suppose that's true. It's it's an RF shield and a heat sink, so heat shield sounds pretty good. Something like might come off a space shuttle. And before I desolder this one, I'm just going to flip it over so you get a good look at how it's connected. So I'm going to probably just be doing the desoldering on the top. Yep. See, you can bend it over. Be careful, there is a power wire there. You see that power wire, that red one? If you want a bit more freedom, just pop it up there so you get a bit more freedom there with it. And that power wire goes to these two tabs here. So we're going to be unsoldering a couple of those. Now, some of you will have a solder sucker and some of you won't. So I think I'm going to attempt maybe to remove some of it without a solder sucker, which is the least preferred way, and then some with. So I know some of you haven't got it and you're going to try anyway. So let's try. So I'm just going between the power leads. One, the other, one, the other. Yeah, that's fine. See, I just kept the... The pin's warm and I was able to extract that. Now the ribbon you really don't want to dwell on because you don't want to dis destroy it too much. So I'm going to just see. I think you can. I can feel the ribbon moving slightly every time I, I do that. So just keep going in, in a line. Yeah, that works actually. God, this could be a new technique. Now I can feel the ribbon getting a bit warm. So I'm just going to let it cool down. You can see it underneath, it's starting to extract and pulling down on it all the time. But once it gets too warm, just stop because you don't want the insulation to melt because that'll make a whole mess of that cable. That's pretty good, actually. Ouch, that one's hot. <laughs> What's my. Oh, my soldering iron is set to 500 degrees, that's why it's hot. Don't set your soldering iron to 500 degrees, that's way too much for this job. There we go. Look. Nice. Put the soldering iron away. Let's have a look, a look at this while we're here, the state of it. Um, they all seem to look about the same. They've all got this glob of gunk. You can see there's a, a lump of gunk there on that coil, the tuning coil. Very weird though, I wonder what they use. Some sort of, looks almost like wax or putty. Um, are there any other markings that are of interest to us right now? Both 1983, Nintendo, Alps. Yeah, throw them in the little bucket of these I've got. I'm just collecting these now. Maybe one day they'll be worth some money and someone will say, Andrew, I want all of those off you. You know where they are. Now you've got two options here and some people do either. I've done both. So you can fit this like that and actually solder them from the top if you want. Yeah, you can do that. And instead of putting them through the holes, you can just lie them on the pins. So when you lie them on the pins, you have to solder them like that basically lying on the pins but these are really good nice and clean so I'm going to do it the proper way and I would suggest it looks awkward so I suggest let's keep the power lead here out of the way for now we're going to do that one from the top because it doesn't really need to go in the bottom but these will line up nicely so I'm holding it in line like that sliding them through you should see them just starting to poke through yep see them right there now if we bend it down because the ribbon cable is pushing up, it's putting a force going upwards. Basically, it's keeping them in the right place, so it allows us to put in a couple of the screws, which we're going to do right now. And that just keeps everything in place, so when we want to apply solder, it's not jostling around, trying to escape. Let's get in there. I reckon, though, Lorne, this is going to be a good one, I think. The condition of this Famicom looks absolutely stonking. I think it's going to work. That's my gut feeling on this. And before I solder that in, just to show you again, you see these other pins here? Just so you don't get confused, there are other pins. And the other pins are for the other style board. So you can see there is slightly different pinout configuration. All of that's on the website though, don't worry. Just have a look at the website, look at the installation pictures. You can't go wrong, it's nice and simple. So I'm going to flip this over. Feels like this is the right way around. This is the way I always work on them. Because <laughs> you can read the writing properly. And then I've got my soldering iron, it's set to 350. So it's just a more reasonable temperature now. It's up to temperature and just hold your soldering iron against the pin and apply a bit of solder from the other side until you see it drift in. And I'm going to zoom right in so you actually have a nice view of that. You don't really... I should have timed this. If, it were, if I wasn't talking and blabbing, I reckon this would be five minutes tops, this whole job. Boom. That's it. Finished. <laughs> so now we have the option of this wire, this power wire. Again, it's up to you. If you want to, 
you could have put it in beforehand. Um, or I just usually just solder them like this on the top. But I've got tweezers here. Should we see if we can poke them through? If I can poke them through, I'll, I'll do it that way. It's a little bit like playing that game when you were a kid. Trying to, to get the uh, bit of wire through the maze before it buzzes. In fact, let me put this solder. <laughs> soldering iron out of the way it's dangerously near my face off camera okay let's just have one more oh look it went through it went through all on its own that one so <laughs> that was good it wasn't even trying at that point so let's solder that hey that's not too bad i feel i feel that this is almost too good an installation now we're doing it all properly all from the correct side but that's fine I do know looking at other people's pictures this is the preferred way people do take a lot of care I get quite a lot of hate on some videos about how I how I treat and manhandle my um, personal electronics. And uh, what's your opinion? Put it down below. Should I um, feel bad about uh, manhandling my personal electronics in a rough manner, or should I be more of a you know? Uh, it's my electronics. I can do what I like with it, basically. As long as it works, I mean, what's the problem? Okay, oh, that's a big old screw. There, nice, and that's in now. Oh no, was that this falling out? Okay. So you can see it's lined up now, the power's there. Now, um, there are holes on the board here. You see these holes? I haven't designed it yet, but I'm hoping someone in the community, because you should be able to 3D print a cover that covers up these apertures. Because you'll see when I screw the lid on, you will have a little bit of an aperture. It, and it, again, it was designed for that. It's just that I haven't bothered to design the 3D printed part for it, because, oh, I don't know, frankly, I don't think it's, it needs it, but you might want it. You know, it's up to you, isn't it? If you want to have a, a visible hole in the back. I'll show you what it looks like once we get these in. I'm certainly not going to turn this around and lose all my six screws. It's now assembled, so you can see from the back you now have your AC adapter. Again, it can be centre positive or centre negative now. This is designed to be polarity agnostic. The TV game and Channel 1 2, of course, become obsolete, and that's the 3D printed potential you have there. Also, if you're making a 3D printed piece, you're modeling it, have it modeled so it covers up the, some of this. Actually, I think, you've got to be careful. I think the RF lead more or less goes inside that, but you want to be careful with that. So, all we need to do now then is hook it up to a TV, and I have. TV handily next to me right here, plop there. RF goes into the back like so. In fact, yeah, that goes in nicely. So if you did want to cover up that roundish bit, you could too. And I've got power supply sitting on the bench. Here it is. And I'm gonna just turn it on just to check what it is. It's chucking out, ooh, it's at 12 volts. You want it more like nine volts. Nine or eight, eight or nine volts is better. The higher the voltage, by the way, the more heat that has to be dissipated. And we don't want to, you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to overburden it, so there you go, that's in there now. You need a game cartridge, and I do have a few. I have Hydelide here, I'm going to put Hydelide in because that looked a bit corrupted on my clone system, and I think this is an original system in there, so it'd be nice to see that without the corruption for a change. I'm going to turn this on, I can see 0.317 amps, so that's good. The power drawer is good, but of course the picture wasn't. So I'm going to get some contact cleaner and clean this out. We're back. I give it a quick rub with some WD-40 contact cleaner. And now we're going to do the moment of truth. Ah! That's so loud. And there you go. You've got a nice highlight there. Hopefully you can see that correctly because sometimes filming CRTs, of course, is hit and miss. Oh, but that picture looks absolutely gorgeous to my eye. I know you're not necessarily getting all of the full benefit of it, but I'm not getting any corruption. This is so much better than using a clone. <laughs> the clone chips just don't work with Hydelide for some reason. And I think, speaking to Simon Locke Argon on Twitter, it's because I'm using a combination of a PAL CPU and an NTSC PPU, something like that I'm mess messing it up with. But I do have a whole selection here, so I, t I do tend to try a few of these titles. And of course, ooh, see that looks like it could do some lubrication right there to get those out. Um, but of course you have to always try the original and the best Mario here. Are you ready kids? Of course you are. Gotta dig that tune. <laughs> 
All right, there you go. So there you have it. If you are interested in fixing your Famicom through this means, uh, again, please consider going on my website and ordering up yourself a power vamp. I do have a few of them left and uh, I can always make a few more if they sell out. And of course you can then just get rid of your modulators of whatever kind and really hopefully enjoy your experience just get on and use your Famicom because frankly that's why I did this in the first place I just was fed up of uh, not being able to tune it in properly and mess remember these are NTSC J as well they don't want to work in <laughs> European tellies at all um, so this is I think a nice solution there are probably other solutions out there take your pick but if you want something nice and simple easy to fix go ahead thank you so much for watching